Hello and welcome to Tuesday Newsday, the number one spot to get the entire week's worth of VR news in one place. This week I have a fun game for Indie Dev Spotlight that is neither an MMO or a combat based game for the first time, but it's still extremely worth checking out. Make sure you stay tuned until the end for that. Now let's get right into the news, starting off with a sad note. Nate Mitchell, the final original co-founder of Oculus, still at the company, has announced that he will be leaving leaving Oculus. So far, we have seen Palmer Lucky leave in 2017, a bit some really interesting conditions. Really, the whole situation was just weird. Brandon Irieve, the previous CEO, left in 2018. Michael Antonov exiting earlier this year. And of course, Nate Mitchell, the last founding father to leave, has just left this past week. Of course, we still have good old boy John Carmack, the current CTO of Oculus, who I personally have always been a fan of, considering I like id games, but it is sad to see the original vision and people that held them gone from the company. By the way, John Carmack did in fact announce that he will be on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast within the next month, so I can't wait for that one. But anyways, back on to Nate. He had this to say in a post on Reddit regarding his exit. Quote, Hey everyone, I have some bittersweet news to share with this community. After seven incredible years, I've decided to move on from Oculus and Facebook. When we posted the Kickstarter in 2012, VR was mostly the stuff of science fiction. We didn't know if people would even take us seriously. We weren't even sure that we'd hit our original $250,000 target. But this community around the world came together and helped us make VR a reality. Fast forward just a few years and VR is changing people's lives every day. This is because of you. Virtual reality is still on the bleeding edge of technology, and this community continues to pioneer the way forward. What's ahead is unknown, and that's what makes it exciting. Stay bold, and keep chasing the future." End quote. Wow, that was a really nice statement. Ending this one with his plans to pretty much travel and spend more time with his family. Either way, I hope you enjoy Mr. Mitchell, and you will be missed by the VR community. I hope to see you back in the industry at some point. And now some breaking news. Insomniac Games, the studio behind Spyro the Dragon, Ratchet and Clank, the new Spider-Man game for PS4, and of course what I'm excited about, the Oculus exclusive called Stormland, has been acquired by Sony. Obviously, my first knee-jerk reaction was wondering if Stormland, this game that I've been excited about for probably over a year now, is still coming to PC or if it is now going to be a PSVR exclusive. Now, according to this tweet, Stormland is still coming to the Rift platform holiday 2019. That is not changing. However, this does mean, at least looking at Sony's acquisitions in the past, that we may never see another PC VR game from Insomniac after Stormland. Traditionally, once a studio is bought to make PlayStation games, they make PlayStation games and that's it. Of course, this buyout has been a long time coming, even since the original days of Spyro and Ratchet and Clank, but I guess it's just taken this long. All in all, this is good and maybe even great for PlayStation and PSVR, but kind of awful for the VR industry as a whole. That is, unless Insomniac is somehow able to make PC VR games for everyone to enjoy as well as releasing those games on PSVR. Because man, if you guys thought that Oculus exclusives were bad, at least you can play those games on a PC. If a game goes PlayStation exclusive, it's completely off limits unless you have a PSVR. PC games go to PSVR. PSVR games don't leave. Well, we'll have to see where this goes in the future and just how strict Sony is, but at the very least, we will still have Stormland coming to PC. And I guess this means that Stormland can potentially come to PSVR as well, but nothing has been said about that, so don't take that for anything other than speculation. On to other Oculus news, so I know that companies filing patents could literally mean nothing at all, but it could also mean that there's a project in the works, either way. Oculus has been awarded some spicy patents for a true haptic feedback VR glove. The three basic features now patented by Oculus are described as a glove with soft material that use millimeter or smaller channels filled with fluid, basically so that objects you interact with have a physical presence by either allowing or disabling movements of your fingers, joints, and the second being, and I'm just going to quote this from Upload VR because me simplifying it would do it no favors. The glove in the patent uses an array of plates which dynamically actuate to touch the user's finger with a force simulating the object the user's finger is touching. 
When pressing against a hard virtual object, such as a button, the plates would resist the pressure of the glove. When pressing a less rigid object, the plates can give much more easily to pressure, providing you the feeling of softness. And finally, the most recent patent being a pneumatic bladder that actually uses a sort of air compressor and high pressure air, along with dozens and dozens of tiny pods that pretty much do both things I just listed, but the standout feature is that it can actually stop your hand and simulate much harsher sensations. Now, I'm not gonna act like I covered that perfectly because I didn't. There's a lot to unpack with these patents and I could make a 30 minute long video on what these do and how these differ from the other haptic gloves that we've seen, but that just wouldn't be very Tuesday news day of me. The Oculus chief scientist, Michael Abrash, did state this technology is not the four years away that he had originally predicted, but instead is more in the decades length of time, from being an actual commercially viable product. Who knows, this could come sooner, this could come later, or we may never see anything out of these patents at all. We'll just have to see. Now on to games. Of course we all know No Man's Sky Beyond and the VR update has been launched this week and I've been playing the piss out of it. There have been updates and hotfixes almost every single day since its launch and I've seen the performance go up every single time. I started my little review series with this game so go check it out if you want. It's called Smash or Pass and I definitely gave this game a smash. That's good. Also not to mention the game is still half off until the end of the month so get it while it's hot. It's actually really worth 30 bucks. Battle Wake, the Servios game that I have covered quite a few times, including a closed beta stream and a standalone video, announced that this game will be released on September 10th. I definitely enjoyed the game from what I saw and what I played, and I'd recommend it at least, you know, wishlist it, see if you like it. And now on to Indie Dev Spotlight. Quick disclaimer, this is not a paid advertisement, just me showing off a project that I think is badass and worth your time. I did receive a key for the game, but that's just about it. There's no other incentive for me to make this. Other than, I just think it's cool. This is O-Shape by the developers Otters Lab. From the Steam store page, O-Shape is a fast-paced VR game where you will perform different poses and move your body to the rhythm of the music to go through silhouettes trimmed on walls. O-Shape is a challenging single-player action VR game that will sharpen your reflexes as you try to dodge every obstacle. Basically, it's just a super fun, fast-paced VR game that gets your body warmed up and active, and all in all, it's just a great time. I spent a bit of sweaty time in the game, and it's nice to see a change of pace and setting from the usual game games that I've been playing. And honestly, I'll probably use this to warm up for Pony Noobs and Pavlov and have a great time while doing it. As always, the Steam Store page is in the description. Well that's the news folks, I hope you enjoyed. I'd love to see your beautiful comments here and next week, same time, same place. Like this if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of it, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.